Please remain standing as Nitya Nilamathu, Student Council President, leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Family and friends, please be seated. Seniors, please be seated. lovely to see a standing room only crowd. We see you folks back there and there'll be, a, uh, there'll be a, an opportunity where we might be able to get you some chairs to come in because there's a little bit of movement during a particular part of the ceremony. So we'll be working on that, but uh, thank you all for coming. Board members, graduates, parents, guests, alumni, and employees, welcome to the commencement for the class of 2023. One of the bittersweet aspects of being an educator is that we get practiced at goodbyes. What can make that even more challenging is that after so many years together, the bonds of familiarity and friendship grow deep. And we gather today to say congratulations to an extraordinary group of young people. Among the class of 2023, we have co-chaired the CA's biannual TEDx event organized and led up the Upper School's Inclusive Art Gallery, started the CA's first men's volleyball team and significantly revitalized and or grew clubs such as Model UN and the Wilderness Club, introduced TerraCycling to CA, helped organize the first ever Student Triangle Asian American Alliance Conference, started a middle school African American Affinity Group Buddy Program, and organized CA's Holocaust Remembrance Days. Our graduates have authored books that range the gamut from a children's book to a memoir to a financial literacy guide. This group started CA's first rocketry club and participated in the American rock rocketry competition, winning first place in the 2022 presentation competition. They led an engrossing assembly, one student led an engrossing assembly on the evolution and celebration of black hairstyles. They helped power the school to runner-up status at the North Carolina Speech and Debate State Championships, which includes all North Carolina schools, public and private. And beyond CA, we have seniors who have designed t-shirts, competed in ballroom dancing, do woodworking, perform in community theater, and restore and sell vintage video games. And finally, we have eight graduates who have committed to continue their athletic careers in college and university. As you can see, the members of the class of 2023 made their mark both on and off campus. And together you shared your curiosity, your laughter, and your love. It gives me great pleasure to welcome family and friends to your commencement ceremony. At this time, I'd like to introduce the members of our board of directors. Independent schools are governed by boards whose directors accept the responsibility for the school's long-term success. Cary Academy's board is a group of highly respected community leaders. They model excellence in their careers, in their community service, and in their commitment to our school. As I list the names of our board members in attendance today, I'd like to ask them to stand when introduced. At the end, would you please join me in thanking them with a well-deserved round of applause. Trudy Bate, Mike Curran, Joan Davis, Manju Kakare, Eric Labor, Anu Manar, 
Alita Payne. Thank you. We will now hear from some very special individuals. Share the honor of having been selected by their classmates. Brian Fang will present a special thank you from the class of 2023. One of my favorite things in the entire world is bread. The satisfying crunch of the crust, the perfect airy texture, the balanced flavor that can act as the backdrop to any dish, it has it all. And when the homemade bread wave washed over America during the pandemic, my mom and I were among those swept out to the sea of endless doughy goodness. We began to make our own bread, experimenting with various special ingredients from pumpkin to sweet potato, and we always took a moment to enjoy the process. Me more so, since I seemed to disappear whenever it came time to do the laborious kneading. Sorry, Mom, and thanks for doing the hard part. And it was through helping, watching, the process of making bread that I realized something about my parents. They had been doing the same careful and loving preparation all my life. The love that I could physically taste baked into each loaf and the hard work I saw spent forming and kneading the dough was only a fraction of the love and hard work my parents and every parent here has spent and poured into their kids. Like a master baker, you all have toiled for 18 years, skillfully mixing together endless love and attention, carefully balancing freedom and guidance, kneading in valuable lectures, I mean life lessons, shout out dad, and constantly shaping us through your never-ending support and guidance. You strive to find the best possible environments and sought to provide the greatest opportunities for our growth. Through this long and arduous process, you've transformed young, impressionable blank slates into the amazing people you see seated in front of you today. None of us would be who we are or where we are without all that you've done for us. You've labored and sacrificed so much, and your finished masterpiece is almost in sight. But now comes the hard part to take a step back and let the dough rise, to have faith that these wonderful people you've raised will achieve and accomplish beyond your wildest expectations. And while that might scare you, leaving behind something you've nurtured and invested in for so long, don't let it. Unlike a ball of dough, our heads aren't filled with air. Trust us to make the right choices and to do the right things. Trust that all the hard work you put into us will finally come to fruition. We'll always be appreciative of what you've done for us, and no matter how far away we are leaving home for, we'll just be one phone call away. And as we step into this final chapter, we want to express our deepest gratitude for everything. From your enthusiastic participation in every sporting event, regardless of whether we won or lost, to your comforting words of encouragement and comforting arms as we stressed over rapidly approaching deadlines to your constant worrying over our well-being and reminders of tasks we had put off for too long, we all know you always meant the best for us. Thank you so, so much. And as a Cary Academy, Academy, Academy tradition, our seniors have written letters of gratitude to the parents of the class of 2023. So parents, will you please rise to receive them? And seniors, will you please rise to deliver your letters?
students as keynote speakers. We will first hear, followed by Nitya Nalamathi. Faculty, friends, families, students, and classmates. It is an honor to be standing here today as we celebrate this Cary Academy class of 2023. As I prepared thoughts for this speech, I struggled to express what these classmates and this school has meant to me. I realized that a laundry list of moments or accomplishments or memories wouldn't do it justice, nor would an untidy metaphor about climbing mountains or turning pages. No, communicating the greatness of this school and of this class can only be done through a story, and not an exceptional one, not a story about our worst day or even our best, but a story about an average day, a routine experience. That unextraordinary kind of story, I believe, best exemplifies the incredible day-to-day -day spirit of this class. So here it is. June 1st, 2022. My classmates and I are split between work experience programs and discovery term courses. I find myself on the Foothills Trail in South Carolina as part of the Experiencing Wilderness Discovery Term. I and 34 other students are midway through a five-day backpacking trip. Two miles into the day's hike, a rumble fills the air, growing louder and more distinct with each step. The sound of rushing water announces the presence of the Thompson River. And as we draw closer, the crashing sounds of rapids against rocks fill our ears, evoking nervousness, respect, and excitement from our group. We were there to travel down the river, swimming, splashing, and sloshing our way to a breathtaking waterfall half a mile downstream. Normally, at the helm of our pack would be Mr. Russian, our club's faculty sponsor and river traveler extraordinaire. In years past, he has offered advice about slippery moss, deep holes, and strong currents. Unfortunately, days of heavy rainfall had brought the river flooding out of its ordinary, well-worn channel. These rapids were far stronger, faster, and louder than we expected. And we realized that a change of plans was in order. So instead, we form an unbreakable chain, all 35 of us holding hands, and we set out, sloshing and scooting through the river. In the areas where Mr. Russian used to once call attention to slippery moss, deep holes, and strong currents, we now rely on each other to do the same. And we find comfort in knowing that our fellow adventurers are but inches away, providing support and inspiring confidence. And this is where I'll pause to extrapolate the same kind of untidy metaphor that I promised to avoid. Because in many ways, our lives at Cary Academy have been just like this river, turbulent, loud, and fast moving. We know that waterfalls await us on the other end of hard work and determination, but getting there is difficult. Yet we too are constantly comforted by the knowledge that our fellow adventurers, our classmates, are nearby. We are reassured by the teammates who pause to coach us on our stance or form. We are guided by the lab partners who send us their notes and by the faculty who offer guidance and, most importantly, extensions. And most recently, we are bailed out by the junior classmates who have been picking up our slack this semester. And when we slip on moss or slide into a hole, we know that in mere seconds, a helping hand will extend itself to hoist us up again. That's the inimitable draw of Cary Academy. That's what makes this place so special. It's not a challenging curriculum, a beautiful new building, or a focus on experiential learning, though we do have all of those things. No, what pulls us to Cary Academy and keeps us so enthralled is nothing but each other. It's a compassionate, collaborative, and adventurous culture established and upheld by the students on this very stage. Anyway, back to the river. After half a mile of deep holes, slippery rocks, and tight gaps, we emerge at our destination. We find our waterfall, a beautiful display of the intense force through which we just traveled and we marvel as it pounds into the river below, sending a refreshing chill into the air. So we rest, break out the fruit snacks, and celebrate. As I said at the beginning, this story is unextraordinary, and that's what I love about it. There are myriad examples of this class adapting to new challenges, solving problems, and working together. Whether we're on the field or in the classroom, on the stage or in the community, my classmates and I have spent our time here helping each other across our rivers, and now, we've finished those journeys. We've made it to the waterfall. And as we sit here, it's easy to feel like we're leaving behind opportunities and experiences like these. It feels like the stories that have shaped our experiences here are over, ready to be filed away in the nostalgic treasure chest of our mind to be looked back upon with nothing more than a passive smile. And so back to the river we go for more wisdom for the last time, I promise. 
Resting at the foot of the real waterfall, we munch on peanut butter tortillas and fruit snacks. And as we prepare to leave again, the notion of returning upstream somehow seems less daunting. We are now emboldened by the success of our prior adventure. And there's probably another untidy metaphor in that, so I might as well extract that one too. Seniors, we too have traversed our river. And as we sit at the foot of the great waterfall of graduation, let us be more than comforted by our successes. Let us be inspired by them. Let's not view our English papers, lab reports, and sports championships as, as successes of the past, but as inspiration for the future. Let's equip ourselves with these experiences, adding them not to our treasure chests, but to our tool belts. We will have many more rivers to cross in the years to come, but this place, this school, prepares us to cross them like no other place can. What these faculty, our parents, and even our classmates have taught us, at its root, is how to work hard and how to work together. For those lessons, I am forever grateful. So let's stand on our next riverbanks, not with fear or dread or worry in our hearts, but with the utmost confidence. For you will always be a member of the community, not deterred by challenge, but delighted by it. You will always be a member of the community who extends a helping hand to hoist each other up. And you will always be a member of this amazing, adventurous place called Cary Academy. Congratulations to the class of 2023 on this tremendous achievement. Thank you. I'd like to start off by saying goodbye. Goodbye to all the friends and family in the audience that have made the past seven years so memorable. Goodbye to the teachers who fostered an environment that made us genuinely want to learn. And goodbye to the classmates who made that very same environment a lot harder to learn in. Goodbye to this gym where I've gotten hit in the head with a dodgeball more times than I can count. And goodbye to this campus where I met the people I'll remember for the rest of my life. I've got so many more goodbyes but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I should probably preface these goodbyes with a hello. Good afternoon. I'm so glad you're all here to celebrate the graduation of the class of 2023, the class that's always getting ahead of itself. From the dawn of time, circa 2004, 2005, we've desperately wanted to be older. As sixth graders, we so badly wanted to be a seventh grader and play a sport. When we got there, we stared longingly at the eighth graders, hoping to get out of the trenches and move to the other side of the hallway. Immediately after eighth grade celebration, not graduation, we were already in talks about free periods and being able to have our phones out during the day. And during these free periods, we couldn't stop talking about how excited we were to go to France and Argentina and Germany and China. And in the downtime that freed up, now that we weren't going on these trips, we talked about how exciting it'd be to be able to drive ourselves to school and not have our parents drop us off in the carpool line. And on these drives to school, all we could think about was this moment, graduating. All we've ever wanted to do was grow up. From a young age, we wanted to be cooler, smarter, and taller. Cool enough for our older siblings to finally see us as an actual person, and not just that thing that sits next to them at the dinner table. Tall enough to ride that roller coaster at Bush Gardens, and smart enough to read chapter books. And now here we are, closing one chapter of our lives and turning the page to the next. But for the first time in my life, I want nothing more than to just put the book down. If it was up to me, I'd freeze time right now. But because I can't do that, I'd like to rewind, put back a few chapters, and hand out some advice along the way. Advice we will certainly need in the coming chapters. But who am I to give advice to my own classmates? We're all the same age and have had similar experiences. So instead, I'll give you some wise words from the experts, the people who know or at least claim to know it all, my parents. <laughs> While some of our books started later on, mine started in sixth grade. With some of our classmates joining in ninth grade, we all had different chapter ones. But for me, chapter one was sixth grade. As I was being dropped off in the middle school circle and my parents turned down the radio playing closer by the chain smokers, I knew I was about to get a pep talk. I'm under the assumption it was supposed to be inspiring and encouraging and moving, but frankly, to me, it was a little insulting. Please make friends. My parents begged me. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to make it clear that's never been a problem. And second of all, you didn't have to tell me. I had already heard rumors of the Raleigh school kids. 
how they come to Cary Academy in hordes and ward off any potential newcomers. I was petrified. I've since made a few friends, some from the Raleigh school, some not. But as we transition to a whole new environment, I'm reminded of my parents' advice once again. To the class of 2023, please make friends in college and beyond. Now let's flip the page to chapter two, seventh grade. All doe-eyed and thrilled to finally be old enough to play a sport at Cary Academy, I joined the tennis team. And to this, my mother said, lather on the sunscreen. Although I may or may not have taken her advice back then, I know now the harmful effects of prolonged UV exposure. And as sticky as it might feel, it's important to take care of ourselves. As we move out and no longer have a parent reminding us to put on sunscreen, remember to take time for yourself and remember to do what's best for you. There'll be plenty of opportunities to fill up your calendar with classes and social events, but make sure to factor in some time for yourself as well. Chapter three, eighth grade. With Mr. Snively and Ms. Stewart's history classes jumping from project to project, there arose two options. Do it or do it well. Sure, you could just check off the boxes on the rubric and call it a day. But my dad told me to put in the effort. The more you invested into the URCA mock presidential elections and the Senate simulation and Watergate, the more you would get out of it. And as much as this applied when we were 13, it'll be even more applicable in the coming years. So please, class of 2023, Put in the effort and do it well. Chapter four, ninth grade. Our first free periods and many new friends. During my very first free period of the year, my mom texted me asking if I was doing my work. As I was swaddled in an Eno next to the CMS, tossing around a tennis ball with one of the new ninth graders and my computer nowhere in sight, I replied, of course. Sorry, mom. While she was none the wiser, the work certainly caught up to me. In college, when our days are essentially one long free period, remember to use your time wisely and get your work done. Now chapter five is 10th grade. And after I racked up a rap sheet as long as my arm of unexcused tardies, my dad told me punctuality is the politeness of kings. I nodded along and pretended to know what he meant and continued to add to my rap sheet. But later, I learned, you need to be on time. And for the class of 2023, we should keep that in mind, not only when we're thinking of showing up late to college classes or skipping entirely, but also before a lunch date with a friend or a meeting with a professor. Show up and be on time. Chapter six, 11th grade, the introduction of APs, rather advanced classes. The clock read 3 a.m. I forgot to turn down my computer volume and my parents woke to the ramblings of the organic chemistry tutor before a chem text the next, test the next day. They told me to get some sleep, and I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. In college, make sure to get some sleep. And this brings us to chapter seven. Chapter seven is 12th grade and the one I'm still stuck on. As much as teachers will tell you senioritis is not a thing, I'm here to tell you it is. As senioritis set in, I so desperately wanted to skirt my responsibilities and just relax. But my wise, prudent, brilliant parents told me that high school is not the peak of my existence. There are still 60, 70 more years to go, and while the end might seem so close, and that assignment due at midnight might feel really optional, remember, the finish line is always being pushed back, and more chapters are always being added. Now, I'll be honest with you all, I feel like such a hypocrite giving out all this advice to my classmates and not following half of it. And it's not my fault. An unfortunate side effect of our speeding through life was neglecting our parents' advice and not stopping to appreciate the little moments. It's scary out there. College, the unknown, housing contracts. And so I'd like to invite everyone to take a moment and just relax. We're always rushing through to the next milestone. But it's been a long four to seven years. And it's the summer after senior year, the one time when nothing is expected of us except getting a summer job and buying dorm room decor. We've grown up, so before I leave this stage, I'd like to once again say goodbye. To the class of 2023, goodbye. And to the class of 2027, hello. At the upper school closing ceremony on Thursday, we recognize many students for demonstrating excellence in a variety of areas during this past year. 
At commencement, we show our appreciation for the generosity and vision of Cary Academy's founders by presenting a special award. The Founders Award is presented to a member of the senior class who, in the opinion of the faculty and head of school, has acted as a model for all Cary Academy students through leadership, collaboration, excellence, and contribution to the school community. Each of Cary Academy's previous Founders Award recipients left a distinctive and enduring mark on our school. This year's recipient has done the same. This year's Founders Award recipient brings a mature and personable nature to the classroom in a way that allows him to connect with peers effortlessly. Faculty members praise his ability to learn from and support peers, whether that's during class discourse, on the debate stage, or on the track field. This young man's commitment to, in his own words, put together plans and activities to help make high school a little more fun for everyone, helped to champion the success of numerous initiatives over the years, from Wacky Olympics to Spring Games to, to Quadrilla. He embodies the attributes of a Cary Academy leader, a calming presence mixed with an active work ethic. One teacher sums it up very well, saying this young man, quote, has a spidey sense towards noticing upcoming needs, and he steps up to volunteer before there's an ask. He is the student who finds a cart to prepare for the cleanup process after a campus activity, the first to grab hurdles and move them on or off the track to facilitate efficiency at the track meet. His dedication makes him respected and beloved by our community. As a cornerstone of the CA Wilderness Club, his spirit of collab for collaboration has been displayed be beyond our campus borders. Through an enthusiasm to share his love of the outdoors, he successfully helped coordinate and lead 11 outdoor trips over the past couple of years. As a testament to these efforts, he already holds the CA record with 13 completed trips and will be adding a 14th during the upcoming discovery term. Whether serving as Vice President of Student Council, or waking up before sunrise to boil water for his fellow campers, or embodying the witch from Hansel and Gretel during CA's first ever Halloween float competition, which entailed painting himself green, cackling hysterically while flinging candy at the crowd, our recipient accomplished his goals. He put forth and supported innovative ideas that returned a sense of normalcy and excitement to the student body. Ms. Kakari, would you please join me, as it is an honor to present the 2023 Founders Award to Will Caps. Today, I am honored to introduce our commencement speaker. Admittedly, however, she probably doesn't really need an introduction. You see, for over 25 years, Cindy Laughlin, or Miss Laughlin, as you likely know her, was the first warm, reassuring presence you encountered in the middle school every morning, and one of the last to wave goodbye as you headed home. Indeed, you all know Ms. Laughlin as the middle school's former senior administrative assistant. But perhaps more to the point, she probably knows nearly everyone in this room. A self-identified honorary grandmother to countless middle school students and to a fair share of parents and employees too, myself included, Cindy was the compassionate frontline support we all relied on. Under her steadfast gaze, we felt seen, valued, and cared for. We felt like a community. Left your contacts at home? Ms. Laughlin made sure they were delivered to your classroom. Felt overwhelmed on your first day as a sixth grader? Ms. Laughlin offered a sympathetic ear and a pep talk to boost your confidence. Nervous about that 30 after a late arrival to school? Ms. Laughlin put you at ease by asking after your pet. By its name, of course. Didn't know where to find your student's classroom? Ms. Laughlin could show you the way. Needed a specific kind of classroom supply that was out of stock in three states? Or help wrangling permission slips? Ms. Laughlin was on it. And those are just examples of her visible contributions. Beyond those, Ms. Laughlin was always working tirelessly 
behind the scenes, shaping the middle school experience in ways you may not have even realized. If you didn't have to experience your most challenging class first thing in the morning, when you were still bleary-eyed and unable to concentrate, that was likely thanks to Ms. Laughlin, who meticulously manually scheduled every middle school student's schedule with a thoughtful eye to their specific needs. With CA, since the very beginning, Ms. Laughlin, who joined CA as a longtime resident of Cary and volunteer in the Wake County school system, has helped to shepherd our community through numerous transitions as we have grown and evolved as a school. Along the way, in myriad ways and gestures, she has offered kindness, compassion, and thoughtfulness to students, parents, and faculty alike with an eye to ensuring you all had the best possible experience at CA. It is with thanks that I welcome Ms. Cindy Laughlin, whose legacy in the sturdy foundation first laid in middle school, on which the class of 2023 will now build. Thank you. Good afternoon. Being here today, surrounded by our strong Cary Academy community, I am filled with joy. Thank you for the privilege of being your commencement speaker. I speak to you from my heart, the heart of a long time Cary Academy family member. Our beautiful and talented children sitting on either side of this podium woke up this morning as members of Cary Academy's 2023 senior class. Soon, they will walk through the column formed by Cary Academy's faculty as graduates and members of our Alumni Association. Dr. Earhart, Manju Kakar, Board of Directors, parents, grandparents, guests, distinguished faculty and staff, thank you for being a part of their milestone celebration today. Seniors, I am so proud of you. A quote from Ann Goodnight to the Walter Magazine struck a chord with me as it aligns with my beliefs. I quote, education is the best investment we can make for the future, for children, and for economic well-being. Cary Academy's foundation was built by forward-thinking visionaries, along with acclaimed division heads, brilliant faculty and staff, risk-taking parents, and students with a thirst for learning and new adventures. Above all else, we were a group of people supporting each other to form and build our Cary Academy culture and community. A quarter of a century ago, our community established a tradition where on each academic opening day during our handshake ceremony, students, faculty, and staff are acknowledged, bringing our community together and providing a sense of belonging for each of us. I met many of you when you came for your class visits during your application process. While there might have been a few nervous moments, the nerves were overshadowed by the excitement of seeing what was in the hallways, what was in our classrooms. And I dare say, new friendships were formed that would last through and beyond your middle school years. By the end of that admissions process, we could hardly wait to have you join us. Parents and students, you have heard me say, I had the best seat in the house. From my chair in the middle school, I watched you enter as a group of young and excited students full of promise to grow to be confident Cary Academy students. At Camp Haynes, you flew on the zip line where your screams of laughter and fun were said to have been heard across the camp. 
You conquered the matrix rope course through sheer determination while pushing your boundaries. And needless to say, you bonded through supporting each other, something you continue to do today. You assembled on the quad for the 20th year photo, wrote poetry with Shabazz, built and launched rockets, developed a culture for Y1K, designed and made kites for math projects. And as a community, we watched the eclipse while wearing those 3D glasses. And your handprints remain on our 9-11 remembrance wall. And for those students who were in Mr. Matthews' advisory class, congratulations on your tug-of-war victory. You were active in service projects, competing in the Senate, and starting the program, hashtag I Can Help, Ubuntu, and Eve Olympics. And congratulations to Ms. Stewart's advisory for winning that year's competition. L, at celebration, the first notes you played of Jason Mraz's song, I Am Yours, brought smiles to your classmates' faces. And as your voice filled the auditorium, we were silently singing along. Your performance was fantastic. You made the move across campus to be in life in the upper school, and 18 talented students joined you. They brought their unique experiences, enthusiasms, and strengths. And together, through teamwork, you established yourselves as the new ninth grade class, the class of 2023. You had settled into your role as ninth graders becoming a class who would always take the next step to ensure a positive outcome. And at the close of trimester break, second trimester break, we felt the bump in life's road. When classrooms became virtual, you never missed a step in the academic arena. You formed new ways to have social engagements, keeping friendships together and allowing new ones to form. The pandemic was a first for all of us, and you were amazing. Thank you for rising to the challenge. With the return to campus in 2020, we experienced virtual and in-person learning. We were so proud of you and your families for managing the cohort world, where carpools were disrupted, along with many other challenges. Each of you, parents, students, faculty and coaches handled it all with great grace. Flex Day was introduced along with the new scheduling block. We admired your participation both in developing and leading Flex Day activities. You took advantage of opportunities and developed or fine-tuned your entrepreneurial skills. Abigail Adams said, Learning is not attained by chance. It must be sought for with a bore and attended to with diligence. Your parents followed this advice. They chose the best academic fit for you with their decision to send you to Cary Academy. Your families have supported you during the many hours you spent working on projects, assignments, college essays, and your participation in the arts and on the playing fields. They've traveled with you on college visit, spent time discussing options and pros and cons of different institutions, and their support has never wavered. I'm not sure which is more difficult, being a student and navigating academics, friendship, and peer pressure, or being a parent and watching you do it. As you move through the transition towards university life, be gentle with your parents and siblings. They too are entering a new phase in life. Life will be different for them. They will miss your chatter, your presence, and your laundry. After many of you left the middle school, I would see you in the dining hall, the library, playing fields, the quad, 
or even sailing on Lake Crabtree. I always cherish the times when we had a moment to connect. Several of you joined us after the middle school, and it has been my pleasure getting to know you as well. Seniors, a few short years ago at Celebration, parents and faculty enthusiastically applauded Jackson's performance of Don't Stop Me Now. <laughs> Our community did not stop you. We have encouraged, backed, and celebrated you. We are so proud of each of you for what you bring to our community. You are now ready to take the next well-planned step to explore new opportunities. Be proud of yourself and your accomplishments. Take time to reflect. Recognize your academic work how you handled yourself in collaborative efforts with others. Look back on your participation on the playing fields, in the arts, the service projects in which you were engaged, and how you developed relationships. Cherish your family and friends. We are born into a family. However, friends are relations we independently choose. Continue to build good relationships, both in the academic realm and your personal life. You will have friends that will be temporary and others that will last a lifetime. Regardless of where or how you meet, relationships are important. They will motivate and encourage you. You will share ideas and thoughts happiness and sorrow. Friends will support you in failure and celebrate with you in success. They are your community. Do what brings excitement, enthusiasm, and pushes you to be your best self. Welcome new experiences. Take risks. Challenge yourself to do something that in your wildest dreams you never imagined yourself doing. Develop your strengths and recognize your weakness. Craft your unique character. Author your own story. Don't let others define who you are because you are amazing, brilliant, strong, more than capable, fun, and lovable. Be someone who others trust and have respect for. I would like to share a bit of wisdom that resonates strongly with me. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. Keep close to thought. While people may not remember your words or even who you are, they will never forget how you made them feel in one simple moment. Parents, your children sitting, sitting here would not have had the successes without you. You are their foundation, an active member in their history. You are a significant part of their journey. A few days before Dr. Earhart asked, if I would consider delivering the commencement address, I was fortunate to happen upon a story which Phil Knight, founder of Nike, had given at a conference. I would like to share that story with you today as my address comes to a close. Looking across the audience, Knight asked if anyone had run for exercise to please stand up. Most of the room stood up. Then he, then he asked, if you run at least once a week to please keep standing, most of the room sat down. If you run three times a week, rain or shine, regardless of the weather or the temperature, to please keep standing. The next time you are out there before the sun is up, it's dark, it's cold, it's wet, and you're running by yourself. 
We are the ones standing under the lamppost cheering you on. Seniors, look out in the audience before you. You see your families, your teachers, coaches, and friends. We are the ones who have been and will continue to be those under the lamppost supporting and cheering you on. I wish you joy and happiness. Thank you. Cindy, thank you for your warm and inspirational remarks. Uh, would Shelton Shepard, senior class grade leader, and Mrs. Kakari please come forward to assist with the presenting of the diplomas? <laughs> Members of the board, faculty, staff, administration, and guests, it is my privilege to present to you the following members of the senior class. They have met all the requirements to earn the Cary Academy Diploma. Seniors, when your name is called, please come forward to receive your diploma. The seniors on my right, please rise. Keshev Ryan Alapati. Evan Michael Alexander. Elizabeth Tanner Azrak. Joshua Garland Baird. Brooke Renee Bevan. Ryan Joseph Blau. Reese Taylor Loden. Elise Baxter Boyce. Eric Francis Bright. Nash Chambers Brown. Delaney Tyne Bundy. William Lewis Caps. <laughs> Haley Bella Chandler. <laughs> Evan Victor Chang. <laughs> Cohen Chow. Jaden Jackson Chavla. Anderson James Colantoni. Harrison David Komen. Jared Anderson Cooper. <laughs> William Finan Corky.
Landon James Catronis. Chase Sean Dawson. Samantha Ryan Dorfman. Ibrahim Elbeck. Andrew Eugene Epperson. Emma Audrey Esposito. Brian Fang. Matthew Gabriel Ferranti. Jerry William Fox. Cameron Ross Friedman. Danica Joy Ginsburg. Rowan Miguel Geralt. Ella Elise Gupta. Nina Sadna Gupta. Richard S. A. Hager. William Lyndon Hankins. Christian Alejandro Herrera Tenorio. <laughs> El Salam Houseman. <laughs> Eva Wenyung Su. Haitian Huang. <laughs> Brennan Andrew Hugo. <laughs> Joshua Cole Ingalls. Nikhil Sanjay Jagannath. Maris Anissa James. Unsa Joe. Kainoa Von Kalibi. Joshua William Kendall. Ford Carr Kuderi. Colin Matthew Kimball. Vikram Komoretti. Zoe Sophia Koo. Alexandra Virginia Kratz.
Annie Peng Yi Lan. Deborah Zerahun Lemma. Would the seniors on my left please stand? Mickey Lewis. Wo Kwan Lee. Chelsea Lynn Lee. Lauren Madison Leinberger. Ariana Juliette Laughlin. Jackson Thomas McCall. Declan Canby McCallum. Cameron Tatum McClanahan. Bennett Cole Messer. Riley Teague Moore. Andrew George Murgatroyd. Ryan Vaidya Nagaraj. Nitya Yagnia Nalmotu. Ivy Nangalia. Benjamin Evan Natan. Mia Ann Flynn Nesbitt. Ryan Alexander Nunim. Evan Bale O'Connell. Nishant Jivan Pai. Caroline Alice Parker. Priyanka Sajal Patel. John Richard Perkins III. <laughs> Sophia Isabella Pignataro. <laughs> Jenna Wood Pullen. <laughs> Lynn Ann Reed. Jack Thomas Robeson in Abstentia, Madison Sidney Ross. <laughs> Alexander Thomas Rousseau. <laughs> Nathan Andrew Rudy. Kate Becker Sandruter. Emerson Richard Sauls.
Matthew James Schricker. <laughs> Hannah Marie Sirwin. <laughs> Andrew Troy Shaughnessy. <laughs> Karina Lee Shashadri. Isaiah Christian Short. <laughs> Jay Young Sim. <laughs> Michael Leonard Singleton. <laughs> Abby Smetana. Amy Eleanor Snively. Ariel Yadidia Solomon. Jason Thomas Sparks. Aaron Christopher Swift. <laughs> Kennedy Scott Swires. <laughs> Joshua Robert Taylor. <laughs> Owen Andrew Tache. Nusha Tehrani. <laughs> Daria Skye Thompson. <laughs> Timur Vidimovich Tichenko. <laughs> Teja Nikunj Kwasudev. Michael Frank Wessels. <laughs> Leah Marie Weeby. <laughs> Brooke Melody Wu. <laughs> Rhoda Yankowenko in Abstentia. Leo Yunglong Yu. Evan Tsu. Andrew Wayne Zook Jr. Would the entire class please rise? Ms. Kakare, I hereby present to you the Carrie Kemenet class of 2023. Graduates, 
Please be seated. It is my honor and privilege to stand before you today as the chair of board of directors of this wonderful institution. On behalf of the entire board, I extend our heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you for achieving this milestone in your lives. Let me be the first to welcome you to the Cary Academy Alumni Network. As we gather here today to celebrate your graduation, we cannot ignore the extraordinary circumstances under which you have completed your high school years. The COVID-19 pandemic has tested us all in ways we never could have imagined. And you, the graduating class of 2023, have experienced the full range of its impact on education. You have faced uncertainty, anxiety, and disruption, yet you have persevered. You have also been the driving force behind the innovative initiatives that we have set our school apart from others. As you move on to the next chapter in your lives, you carry with you a unique set of skills and experiences that will serve you well. You have learned to be adaptable, to embrace change, and to think creatively. You have learned to collaborate, to communicate, and to problem solve in new and innovative ways. I urge you to continue embodying these values and carrying our mission forward. Let your curiosity guide you toward new discoveries and innovative solutions. Let your pursuit of excellence motivate you to reach new heights and push the boundaries of what is possible. Remember that you are capable of achieving anything you set your mind to. We are proud of you, and we know that you will continue to make a positive impact on the world. I encourage you to make a conscious effort to stay connected with the people and things that matter the most to you. Whether it's your classmates, your teachers, your family, or your passions, stay connected and never forget the relationships and experiences that have brought you to this moment. Congratulations, class of 2023, and I thank you for inspiring us all with your resilience and determination. I would like to express my gratitude to members of our community who have worked diligently to make this commencement special. Aaron Yance and Kristen Thompson, Allie Page and the development staff, Mandy Daly and our communication staff, Tony Hinton and the operations team, Stephen O'Neill, Shelton Shepard, and Kim Fogelman. You work exceedingly hard every year to make commencement magical, and once again, you have been successful. Thank you. To Cary Academy's faculty and staff, while we are rightly proud of our beautiful campus and our shiny technology and our wonderful experiential learning opportunities, you are the heart and soul and engine, although maybe rotary motor is more appropriate nowadays, of this very special place. Thank you for sharing your grace, your wisdom, and your love with this year's graduating seniors. Finally, I'd like to recognize any alumni in attendance today. Would you please stand? Thank you for staying connected with your classmates and your school, and we're delighted to have you here today. As we close, our faculty and staff will exit first to, reform a, to form a receiving line for our new graduates. Please give all the graduates an opportunity to exit through that line before you all leave. We invite you to join us for a reception honoring our graduates in the fitness center lobby which is the building directly to your right upon exiting. <clears throat> 